It's been just me and my brother for the last 14 years. No one else. He's Randall. I'm Joe. Randall thinks his leg doesn't belong to him. I think he's crazy. He is, of course. We both are. We've always been. But this seemed different, still. I didn't believe him until his foot started to talk. I'm gonna hurt you, Randy, the foot announced. It was the middle of the night. The voice woke us both up. See? shouted my brother. See? I bolted upright and turned on the bedside lamp and looked across the room. My brother's fat foot was sticking out from underneath the sheet. His toes were wiggling. I'll walk you off the roof and you'll go splat all over the sidewalk just like your daddy did. Stop it! Randy sobbed and kicked at it with his other heel. I got up and approached my brother's bed. His foot swayed back and forth, his ankle cracking and popping like my knees do when I bend down to pick stuff up. Randy, why is your foot talking? I asked. I looked at my brother. His swollen face was pale, tear-streaked. He seemed terrified. It's not... it's not mine. It's not mine, the whole leg. It's someone else's. My brother's knee peeked out from under the covers. Hi, Joe, he whispered. I'm gonna kick you to death before I kill your brother. Randall gasped. I felt my eyes welling up. He seemed so terrified. I put my palm against his forehead, usually calmed him down. We sat in silence until I fell asleep next to him. His leg didn't talk again that night. In the morning, Randall just got up to take a shower. I stayed in bed thinking about what had just happened a few hours earlier. Just us being us, I reassured myself. Just a bad night. A crash followed by a shrill scream erupted from the bathroom. Randy? I shouted and I ran to him. My brother was on the floor of the tub. His right leg was sticking straight up. Help me, Joe! He begged. He reached out his arm. I grabbed his hand. I tried to lift him up. He was so heavy. I groaned and pulled, but he wasn't putting in any effort. Couldn't do it by myself. Please, Randall, I need you to push, I instructed. He wasn't paying attention. He was staring at his toes. They spoke. I hope this hurts, they exclaimed in unison and began to laugh. Both my eyes... Before my eyes, the toenails began to lift. Randy shrieked. One by one, the nails tore themselves from his foot and fell onto his chest. Blood drooled down his foot. Oh my god, Randy, what's happening to you? It's gonna kill me, Joe. I'm gonna die. I don't want to. I don't want to leave you alone. His toes twisted and whirled around. The sounds of bones snapping and dislocating was louder than the screams of agony they produced. Just... Just help, Randy begged. My mind spun. I... I couldn't bear to see him like this. Hang on, Randy. I'm, I'm gonna fix this. I left his side and rushed to the kitchen. I could hear the bones splintering from two rooms over. My brother wasn't screaming anymore. He just wept. I rummaged through the drawers until I found what I was looking for. I grabbed it and returned. Randy's eyes lit up when he saw me. Yes, he urged. Yes, quickly. I brought the shears to my brother's toes and began to cut. One by one, the detached pieces plopped onto the tub. Randy had gone white. Looked like he was going to pass out. I'm almost done, Rand. Y you'll be okay soon. Only the big toe remained. Shuddered and jerked. I could tell the bones inside were pulverized. I closed the shears around it and clipped. Blood oozed from the five stumps at the end of my brother's foot. Come on, I whispered. I wrapped the wounds in a thick towel. Let's try to get up. It took twenty minutes to get my brother out of the tub. I held him under his arms as he hobbled to the bed where he collapsed. He rolled over and stared at the ceiling. I'm sorry. He whimpered. I'm sorry my leg is bad. I don't mean it. Shh, I said, placing my hand on his forehead. Shh. Shh. A voice mimicked. Shh. We both looked down. The knee was talking. Shh. 
<laughs> it repeated and laughed. I hate the- Randy began. Then as we watched, his knee inverted with an ear-splitting crack. My brother's howl exploded through the room. His thigh remained pressed against the bed, but his calf and foot stood erect. The foot twirled around as if it were on a pivot. My jaw dropped as his Achilles tendon stretched and popped, rolling into his calf before the ankle broke. No, I pleaded. No, don't. Randy's calf sliced through the air in my direction. His foot impacted against my face with so much force I fell. Everything dimmed. Muffled sounds of cracking and crying combined with the high-pitched ringing in my ears. I tried to stand them unsteady legs. How about this? My brother's thigh suggested before folding in half. The sound of his femur shattering was like a gunshot. Randall lay motionless in the bed. His eyes were bulging. His breaths were shallow. I couldn't imagine what all this stress was doing to his heart. It's going to be over soon. I assured my brother. I'm not going to let this kill you. You're my brother. I love you. I hobbled to the kitchen and I returned with our serrated bread knife. Do you want this to be over? I asked. I couldn't tell if he was still with me or if he'd retreated into a safer place. Please, just, just give me a signal if you're ready. I, I, I can't do it unless you say it's okay. I stared into my brother's glazed eyes. Blink twice. I whispered, blink twice, and I'll be able to help. Randall blinked once. He stopped. Please, I urged. He blinked again, and again, over and over, my brother's eyelids snapped open and closed. It was all I needed. Okay, I acknowledged. Okay. I cut off a strip of sheet, tied it around Randy's thigh, up near the hip, and then began to saw. Before I knew it, I had reached his femur. I pressed down as hard as I could and tried to saw through. It wasn't easy. Blood poured onto the bed. My brother's eyes were closed. I cut and cut and cut, breaching bone and passing through the soft marrow to the other side. A deep groan filled the air. It was a leg. Not just the foot or the ankle or the knee or the thigh. It was the whole leg groaning in unison as I powered through the remains of the bone and muscle until finally... It was off. I pushed Randy's leg off the side of the bed and landed with a thud. Randy? I pleaded. Randy? Open your eyes. He obeyed. A smile etched itself across his gray face. You did it, he whispered. I'm safe. But thanks, Joe. I reached across the nightstand and called 911, told them there'd been an accident, and they said they were on their way. Hang in there, Rand, I said, holding his hand. You'll be okay. His eyes were closed again. His chest barely moved. Hang in there, I repeated, tears carving through the blood spatters on my face. At my feet, the detached limb twitched. I gasped and backed away. It jerked, it cracked, bones breaking with each spasmodic movement, inch by inch it crawled across the floor towards the open window, laughing as it went. Thanks for that, it giggled, hauling itself off the ground to the windowsill. Bye now. It rolled off the sill and out into the world. After a few more minutes, the paramedics were banging on my door. I let them in. Two police officers were with them. Oh my dear sweet Christ, one of the cops whispered. My brother's gonna be okay, right? I begged. I tried to help him, but I don't know if I made it worse. The two medics looked at the bloody knife on the ground. One of the officers asked me to put my hands behind my head. And he handcuffed me. Where's the leg? A medic wondered aloud. It went out the window, I answered. He looked at me. Then out the window. Then turned to his colleague and shook his head. Still bleeding badly, the other one said. Get some towels from the bathroom to help wrap him before we get him. Get some towels from the bathroom to help wrap him before we transit. The younger medic walked to the bathroom. I noticed a soft clattering sound ever since the commotion died down when the medic went in. The clattering grew louder. The hell? I heard him say. Then he pulled back the curtain. He hollered. The other medic and the officers ran in. 
What the? Are, are those toes? One of them began. They're moving! Another observed, his hand thick with disgust. No one said anything else. The medics emerged from the bathroom and wrapped my brother's leg good and tight. They hoisted him onto the gurney. The officer holding me gave me a shove to get me moving. I obeyed. We rode down in the freight elevator together in silence. Right before we reached the ground floor, I glanced over at Randy. His eyes were open again. Tears ran down his cheeks. I love you, Rand, I told him. His eyes met mine, but he didn't reply. Rand? Rand? He kept looking at me. His eyes widening. Randall? Then the elevator doors opened as my brother's left pupil started to laugh. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I wanted to tell you thank you for watching tonight's video, or listening to tonight's episode of the podcast, or, uh, listening to tonight's upload to SoundCloud. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what this show is anymore. If you guys would like to check out the show in all of its entirety, then if you're listening to this as a podcast, you can always check me out at youtube.com slash Mr. Creepypasta, or if you're not checking this out on the podcast, then you can check out the podcast at Mr. Creepypasta Storytime on Spotify and iTunes and Google Play and just about anywhere there's podcasts. I'd also like to give a big thank you to Chumpinski, Daniel Polson, and Dante Rao. Thank you guys for being supporters on Patreon, and if anyone else here would like to help support the Patreon and make sure that my cat gets fed, check me out at patreon.com slash Mr. Creepypasta. One last thing also, I'm going to be at NoBrandCon this month, March 29th through the 31st in the Wisconsin Dells. If you guys would like to find out more about NoBrandCon, which I sincerely hope that some of you do, because otherwise it'll be rather boring if I'm just there by myself, but NoBrandCon.org is the place to go. Alright guys, once again thanks for listening, and sweet dreams. <laughs>